Gilbert on BBC Radio Wales. You're listening to this, you're listening to Rod Gilbert's Best Bits. Some of the best bits of my Saturday morning radio show live on BBC Radio Wales. This week I'm in my kitchen in London with Mr Lloyd Langford. This is Rod Gilbert live, live on BBC Radio Wales, but get this, this is confusing, I'm in London. That's right. BBC Wales, and yeah, I'm in London. How does that work, eh, folks? How does that work, little Lloyd Langford? Oh, I was, sorry, I was distracted by a squirrel in your garden eating your plants. Look. Where? <laughs> hey! There's a squirrel in my garden eating my plants! He's absolutely right, ladies and gentlemen. I looked up, I said, little Lloyd Langford, I looked at him, and he was just staring out the window, and there, there was... Look at that squirrel going! Look at him! I feel like Kate Humble. I feel like Kate Humble. Look, what's he doing? What's he doing? He's, he's, he's ladies and gentlemen, if I could describe the scene, three yards away from us, just as we start the show, who, who rocks up? A Mr. Squirrel, Tufty. Uh, Mr. Tufty rocks up, stands on the side of a plant pot, and then he was sort of hammering his face into the pot like a kind of furry woodpecker. <laughs> Wasn't he? he was like, do you see him? He was like a little pneumatic squirrel smashing his face into the flower pot. I can't see which pot it is. I think it might be the uh, dead cress. Not cress, chives. Oh, well, that's right. He was looking for some herbs. He was uh, he was after the herb, man. That's what he was after, that old tufty squirrel. Anyway, he's, he's run off now, yeah. hasn't he? He's uh, panic over, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> he's, uh, he's an unusual start to the show there, but what, this, is the, this is the thing, you see. We are live on BBC Radio Wales. We are in uh, in London, though, in my kitchen, and just outside is nature. Yeah, you, you wouldn't... Outside wouldn't... the window. You don't get this in a BBC studio, because no, there's no windows. Maybe the odd rat. Maybe the odd rat, exactly. But that's the BBC. Yep. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I'm looking out the window and uh, it's a horrible day as well. That's the thing. Go up. He, should he shouldn't be out in this weather. Should he? That squirrel, he's going to take off in a minute like a little squirrel kite. <laughs> the squirrel who, who, when we opened the show, Lloyd was staring into the garden, distracted by a squirrel who was ramming his face into my chive box. Right? Uh, like chive squirrel, <laughs> <laughs> chive squirrel uh, was uh, well. Well, he's last seen. He had his head in the lavender. Yeah, he was bothering the lavender. He was bothering the lavender a minute ago. Again, his little back legs up on the up on the perimeter, sort of of the uh, of the what do you call it? The, pot. The, the, yeah, the pot. The pot, and he was ramming his face into the lavender. Like a prop forward. Yeah, he was. He was scrumming sort of, against your hooves. Yeah, he was hunking down, wasn't he? into my lavender but we can't call him lavender squirrel i prefer chive squirrel yep um so anyway that's the update anyway he's now you'd be glad to hear everyone he's now gone uh although lloyd's had said why don't you put some nuts out for him <laughs> that was your advice well i think uh, you're supposed to put nuts out you're for you're not you know no, you're not you said i said you don't put nuts out for squirrels well uh, you put them out for birds you're right. you said you do you put them out for birds and squirrels i've seen honestly i've seen people feed the birds i've seen people down at trafalgar square people go down to them buy little bags of i don't know nuts or seeds or bread whatever it is to feed the birds. people feeding ducks i've seen it but you, nobody you don't go and feed squirrels mate it's like leaving food out to try and encourage rats well, I'm just thinking, he's, he's going to be less interested in your uh, herb garden if you... If you he's can... not. He's going to have the nuts and then he's going to go, <laughs> thanks very much, mate, and now I'll have the herbs as well. He's not going to go, oh, fair play. They, they've left me nuts down. I won't bother their herbs anymore. This is clearly, this is clearly a really nice gesture to stop me going at the herbs, is he? He's going to go for both. He's not an idiot. You can't sustain yourself just on herbs. Even if you are a squirrel. Oh, I know a saying that goes a bit like that. A squirrel cannot... What is it? What's, this, what's the famous... A squirrel cannot live on chive alone. On chives alone. <laughs> That's why he's going for the lavender, probably. <laughs> uh, anyway, we're having a light-hearted gamble through the newspapers. I... And you've just uh, found something, unearthed something, with, with a very local bias. Yes. A rugby player with the biggest feet in Britain has been sidelined because he can't find a new pair of size 21 boots. Do you know what? I was just going to stop you before you said that and say, let's have a phone in where people try and guess, <laughs> guess what size boots he has. Because you'd never have guessed 21, I don't think. He's 22 and his boots are 21. Yeah, I can cope with that kind of almost coincidence. Anyway. I'm not going to get that confused. He so played... he's 21, you're saying? His boots are 22? Well. Oh, no. What is it again? He's 22. He's 22. That's 22 right. His, his boots, boots are 21. 21 yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Age and size. He plays for... That, those are... Can I just stop you there, though, just to make a comment? Yeah. Those are big, big boots. They, they are, yeah. Aren't they? I mean, you, you have abnormally big feet. <laughs> yeah. That is fair to say that you look absurd. <laughs> 
physically absurd. Well, it? That's not fair to say. I mean, it is. <laughs> it's quite it is. You look like a tool my dad used to have in his toolbox, and I never knew what it was for. It was just an L. <laughs> I never knew what that was for. It was like a wooden piece and a metal piece in the shape of an L. Oh, and yeah. I never knew what it was. What a was that set, for? set square, is it? No, but a set square, isn't that like a... Oh, isn't a set square like a triangle, though? I, I mean, this I, what didn't have the third I piece. I know what you mean, yeah. I, it, it was just an L. It's an L and, and one, one bit's wood. One, one bit's wood and one bit's metal. metal. We can't describe it any more than that, Lloyd. I, used to, you, I tell you what you use it for. What? If you're sore in a bit The only of... thing I've ever used it for, to be honest with you, is I've held it up when you've been standing near me <laughs> when you've been standing near me i've held it up and then i've kind of lined it up with you and gone, yeah he is a perfect l you are what six foot one yeah and your feet horizontally are exactly the same length. <laughs> and you are only a size what 12 i am you're only a size 12 feet yeah i'm a size 10 you've got big big feet but he's size 21 yeah i can't even imagine a foot that big it's like twice as long as one of my feet. Is it? Is that how it works? Sort of. Robert Wadlow, the tallest man in the world, who yeah. I bizarrely know a lot about. Do yeah. you know what size his shoes were? Nope. 37 AA. I think you're mixing up feet nope. and bra sizes. No, I'm not. He didn't wear a bra. <laughs> <laughs> this, was a, this was the 30s. You can't get AA feet. You can. You can. You? you can. He did. I don't know where he got them. <laughs> but you, he was size 37 double A feet. You can look it up. Look all right, it up. okay. Look it up on a look it up on a notorious search engine. By uh, all means. Uh, anyway, I'm not sure how it works. How, how long are he? Anyway, he's from Carmarthenshire. Yeah, which is he why play, I said it. He plays from uh, Trim Sarah and RFC. Trim Sarah, which I think is Jonathan Davis's old uh, old club. So he's got 21 feet. And he hasn't been able size to size 21. He feet. hasn't been able to. <laughs> <laughs> He'd have more problems if he had 21 feet. He hasn't been able to play because he can't find boots to fit him. Uh, he was playing in a size 18, which you is three. You can't play size 18 if you're a size 21 I, foot. Exactly, his toes were bent over. That's like me trying to get, get into small underpants. <laughs> <laughs> you have got a very large bottom. I have. Uh, yeah, he's appealing because he need, he's basically saying all the people he's contacting, they they refuse to make boots big enough for him. What are we going to do for the poor young lad? What's his name? His name is Carl Griffiths. He's 22. Ooh. Well, you could do. I think you've got a lot of sway, influence. Yeah, not with sports shoe manufacturers. <laughs> They've got very little. We can put a shout out. You get, you can get custom. What, a shout out on Radio Wells and and hope that that maybe maybe the I don't know the managing director of Adidas <laughs> or Nike or Puma are listening and then they, and then uh, tugs on their heartstrings and they think I'm going to make a, a pair specially. Maybe a kind. Why don't you get a pair of handmade ones? A, exactly, a kind-hearted cobbler. Yeah. Listening to the show. Any kind-hearted cobblers out there? Bing bong! <laughs> Any kind-hearted cobblers? Please contact the show. 8, 10, 12, you can text us. He could make a sort of franken boot out of two smaller boots. <laughs> he could make a franken boot out of two smaller boots. A sort of Why doesn't he just shove shut? his foot in a small animal? Well, again, mate, animal cruelty. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I was just thinking he could just shove his feet in two badgers. Or something. Mm, I think it's against the rules of uh, play. <laughs> is that, does that class as baiting? Two extra men on the pitch. <laughs> <laughs> Any kind-hearted cobblers out there, would you make Cargill a size 21 boot? You can't you can't live with an 18. It's too painful. Um, oh, well, we've done we've done all we can for we, now. We long. have done all we can. If anybody knows, get in touch. Yeah, if anybody knows, get, get in touch. Or even if you know a kind-hearted cobbler. Maybe there's one in the family. Cast your mind back. Lloyd Blankford. Yes. A week ago today. Yep. We thee in, and me. We were in Swansea. We were in Swansea, in that little studio in Swansea. And uh, I was a, a bit wound up at the start of the show. A, because all the sandwiches in the supermarket we'd just been to were literally fatal. Yes. In terms of their salt and fat content. Instant death from eating a sandwich. And then I went to the bread counter. Just I thought, and they were the bread was three cheese bread on sale. I thought, and then and then I picked up the Daily Express and it said free pasty. And I thought, how are we, how are we going to avoid this obesity epidemic? We're all around us. Well, well, Lloyd. Well, just one week later, and look at the turnaround from the Daily Express. Other newspapers are available. Look at the turnaround. They were obviously listening to Radio Wales yep. last Saturday morning. They're obviously listening to us. Free loaf of Weight Watchers bread. <laughs> For every reader on the front of the Daily Express today, who says that you can't effect change? Yeah, I mean... We have brought about an absolute turnaround there, I've there's never, no question. I've never heard of Weight Watchers bread. Nor have I. But maybe, there's just, maybe every other slice is missing. 
Do you think that's what it is? There's only slices one, three, five, seven, nine, and eleven. Is this half as big as normal bread? That could be another option. Could be. Could be. I don't know. Maybe they just haven't put three cheeses in it. <laughs> well, that would that maybe would, certain, that would certainly help, wouldn't it? If you didn't load it with cheese. Maybe it's like one of those electronics greeting cards. Every time you open the bread, it says, "Do you really need any bread?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe it is. Maybe it has got one of those little, uh, whatever they call them, widgets, musical yeah. widgets uh, in it. Anyway, so I was very pleased to see that. You also remember last week, last week as a result of the uh, uh, of the, the free pasty for every reader offer in the in the uh, Daily Express, which we started off poo-pooing, and by the end we'd come round to it. Did yes. You, did you apply for yours? Did you send off your coupon and allow 28 days for delivery? <laughs> I didn't. I wanted mine there or not at all. Anyway, we decided we would give out free pies on the streets of Swansea. Yeah, Swansea bus station. We went... <laughs> we decided on air that we would give out free pies in Swansea bus station. Now, this is the problem with the new BBC, isn't it? Is that the producer said, you know you're going to have to do that now. You can't, you can't just go <laughs> announcing things on the BBC and then not do them. Right? So Lloyd and I went to a pie shop in Swansea, went out on the streets of Swansea, down the bus station. We took how many pies, Lloyd? Eight. Eight pies. Two boxes of pies. Yeah. We've got the picture to prove it. Let's put it on the uh, at Rod Gilbert Show Twitter thing, however that's done. We'll send it to you. And, uh, well... <laughs> it was not a success. <laughs> I don't know. Well, you know, when One Direction go out, or, you know, people do a book <laughs> sign-in, you know, and there's thousands there greeting them, isn't there? Remember the Beatles arrived in America? Yeah, at yeah. the airport, where the whole airport was just thousands of people at, at top of the airport with flags and banners and blankets and screaming girls. I was expecting that, were you? You very wisely pointed out that the bus station was probably a bad place to arrange to... It was a terrible place to give out pies. Because there were lots of people there, but they were mainly... There was lots of people <laughs> milling around, but you couldn't tell if they were waiting for A, a pie, or B, a bus. <laughs> I'm not joking. Lloyd and I stood outside. We were there. We said, look, we're not going to hang about. I said to you, I'm not doing half an hour standing here with pies. People, we set up us one. And yeah. then we waited till 25 to 2. We were pies. One person. We gave away one pie. We gave away one pie. We had a pie each. We had a pie each. <laughs> we had a pie each. And then we gave away one pie to one woman called Cara, was it? Or Clara? One of those. Either Cara or Clara came along and said, I'd like a free pie. We gave her a free pie. We stood there awkwardly while the three of us ate pies in Swansea bus station. She refused a second pie. She refused us. I offered her another five pies. <laughs> I tried to palm off on her. She wasn't having it. And we left. And that was, <laughs> that was it. We didn't even, we didn't even get this, ladies and gentlemen. We didn't even get somebody come up and go, hey, are you Lloyd Langford and Lloyd Gilbert and uh, what are you doing here, lads? Well, you got a, oh, yeah, I have a free pie, why not? Uh, not even that. Not even a single person came up to us and said, <laughs> I recognise you, Can I, uh, what have you got in the box, what are you doing here? Nothing. And you did a whole show about pies once. <laughs> I did you a whole show. A brand recognition. About the award-winning mince pie, I did, you're absolutely right. I'm Absolutely. One of the most disappointing sort of public events of all time. If you've got a... There's a feature. If you've got a more disappointing public <laughs> public event than that. That's a good feature, actually. Yeah, have you, have you been disappointed by a... Maybe a celebrity meeting? Disappointing celebrity meetings and disappointing public events. Yes. That you've either put on or attended. If you've got one that's worse than Lloyd and I standing in Swansea bus station, handing out one pie and then going home, <laughs> <laughs> then I want to hear from you. <laughs> this is Roger but live on BBC Radio Wales with little Lloyd Langford in the uh, co-host's chair. Subject, squirrel. <laughs> If you just joined us at the start of the show, we were uh, well, we were distracted, frankly, at the uh, opening link of the show because there was a squirrel right outside my uh, window in my flat in uh, London. Yeah, right outside the window, who was uh, smashing his face into a into a, a pot full of chives. <laughs> and then after that, he uh, moved on to a pot of lavender. I think it could be a uh, cry for help in the, the garden. Ironically, my wife put that lavender there to uh, deter spiders. <laughs> Absolutely true. <laughs> Lloyd, you've taken a walk around this flat. I've tweeted this before. Every every nook and cranny has, yeah. a, has a conker in it. Does it not? <laughs> it does. 
my wife has got a thing about spiders, not a phobia, just a bit of a thing. And she read on it, so she started putting there's conkers everywhere. You wake up in the morning, you go to the toilet in the night, nah, you're a conker on bare feet, <laughs> under, right under the sole of your foot. It cannot, it, I mean, how do conkers repel spiders? It's just, well, it's like let an old, me it could be an old wives' me. tale, mate. I don't know, mate, I don't know, but she's bought these funny electronic things off the internet, which I'm almost sure are health hazard. <laughs> Some kind, they're electric things, I don't trust them. Right. Uh, they're very dodgy electric things. They make a very high-pitched sound that spiders don't like, apparently. Right. <laughs> my, my view on them is that they don't do anything at all. <laughs> and that somebody's got a really good little con going, going, I'll plug this in, it makes a really... You won't be able to hear it, but the spiders don't like it, this thing. That is a part. And then put conkers around her. And then we've also... She's bought lavender, which the idea was she was going to put it on the windowsills, and then the spiders would walk down the street and go, oh, hang on, there's lavender on that one. And conkers. And conkers. <laughs> Let's go next door. Not worth the trouble, lads. That's what she was hoping. What we didn't tell us is that it attracts squirrels, <laughs> which is uh, arguably worse, uh, I would say. As a squirrel expert, can you tell me... Uh, this is from A. Ducks in Carmarthen. Rod, as a squirrel expert, can you tell me why out of the shell they are called peanuts... I'm not quite sure why this is uh, related to squirrels. <laughs> squirrels, big peanut eaters? I mean, I know that squirrels have nuts, but they're not peanuts, are they? I think they'll take what they're given. Yeah, they will take what they're given, <laughs> but when you see them in a park foraging around, they're not actually looking for peanuts, <laughs> are they? No, no, they're not pe I don't know, even know what type of nuts they are. Hazelnuts? Well, they're those little you know, nuts, aren't they? That you, you acorns? Know. No, they're, they're, I don't know, they're those little nuts you see in parks. You know, with a little frondy top, like a like a banana hat. <laughs> nah, I'm not explaining it very well. I'm starting to feel I know less about nuts than I did a minute ago. <laughs> uh, they're not peanuts. I know that. Definitely not. Are they? Are they even native to the United Kingdom? Peanuts? No. Yeah. Well. No. Well, well there you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what? So a ducks wants to know. Out of the shell, you call it a peanut. In the shell, you call it a monkey nut. Lloyd will probably know this. I don't. I don't, actually. I don't. I don't know why they do that. Okay, let's put that down as feature four. <laughs> feature four: monkey nut versus peanut. I think monkeys in the wild probably eat them out of the shell, but then there's very little opportunity for a monkey to eat them like de shell. You know, if you're buying them like in a pub. <laughs> 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 uh, hi Rod, this is my first time listening after two years of the uh, li listening live after two years listening to the podcasts, podcasts, podcasts about the squirrel feed. This is from James Malia in Sunny Malta. He sent in a, a picture of his herb garden growing very nicely. Oh, very nice. It's a very different image to my herb garden out there, isn't it? Yeah. All my dead herbs in a dead box. About the squirrel feed, I prevented birds eating my herb garden, photo attached, by placing a bird feeder full of seeds. I'm going to sne sneeze, Lloyd. Oh. Excuse me. Oh, sorry, bless you. Oh, I managed to hold that in quite well. <laughs> about the squirrel feed, I prevented birds eating my herb garden by placing a bird feeder full of seeds about two or three metres away, and the birds stopped eating the herbs. This refers to the fact earlier that you said if you want to stop a squirrel eating your herbs, then put some nuts a few metres away. And I said they're just going to eat the nuts and the herbs. It's not going to be an either or in a squirrel's mind. Whereas uh, James Rimalia in Sunny Motta seems to suggest that birds certainly would uh, operate on a kind of uh, either or. Well, once you're full of nuts, you think, well, it's more natural for them to eat nuts. They're only going for the herbs because they're hungry, I imagine. Well, they're probably only going for the nuts because they're hungry as well. <laughs> no, but like... I doubt if they're just having an <laughs> e evening out. <laughs> Lloyd, you are a keen cinema goer. Yes, but not on the weekends. What? There's other people in the cinema on the weekends and I can't... Oh, you are such a curmudge. I such a grinch. I can't countenance Such a them. grump. You can't countenance other people in cinemas. They talk and they go on their phone and they, they just get in the way. Are you sure you're talking about cinema, not a tube station? <laughs> What are you talking about? Yeah, people chat and they... Get in the way? Well, no, I mean, that's all right, but they make noise during the film and I just... What I kind of noise? Chatting. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of thing? No, I think that's a pigeon that's going <laughs> what, what kind of thing are they doing? They chat and they have the film and they text each other. And so they when do you, do you, in, do you insist on going alone, do you? Do you, like, shut off a cinema for yourself? Well, no, I try and go when I figure that 
the least amount of other people will be there. You're so antisocial. No, the Go point on. of the point of cinema. The point of cinema is that it's a communal film-watching activity. That is the point of it. What is the point of going to the cinema just to replicate your own lounge? <laughs> just watch it on telly. I don't mind watching films with loads of other people as long as they behave themselves. Yeah, but you can't guarantee that. Now you go exactly. To this, that's oh. why I go on a Tuesday morning. <laughs> <laughs> Any time other than the weekend. Have you got to grips with 3D films yet? In what sense? Well, you got your head around it. Yeah. Do you like it? No, it's uh, largely a uh, development by the film studios to make more money. I mean, it's not Oof. great, is it? You heard it here first, kids. <laughs> huh? What about them funny glasses? Well, they're all right, don't they? But... Are you... All right, well, let's put it this way. What do you make of 4D films? Because they are on the way. Really? Yeah. What's that? Like, someone comes and breathes on your neck? Yep. Or... Yes, that is exactly what it is. Right? Cineworld is opening the first 4D theatre, which features water sprays, gusts of air, fog, strobe lighting, all inside the auditorium to simulate the weather and scenes on the screen. So, like, oh, oh look at this. Also equipped with a tickler, a small brush. <laughs> so you could be watching a film and, some, and you get tickled. A small brush which swipes the back of your legs while you're watching. So you could be watching a horror film or something like that. You might feel a little brush on the back of your neck or on your legs, that kind of stuff. You into that? Am I into it? No, I'm not into it. It sounds as if Cineworld have a hole in their ceiling and they don't want to fix it. So they're saying, oh yeah, we've got wind and gusts and water and... <laughs> Listen to this. Different scents. Everything from explosives to coffee will be pumped into the theatre to add to the immersive experience. They've tried it before, mate. It never worked. Well. They can't... Well. They can't get rid well, of the smell of coffee to get in the new smell, so then the old film just smells of coffee. <laughs> And then we're in the cinema thinks, maybe I won't watch this film, I'll go and get a coffee. <laughs> <laughs> that, is a, that is a problem. <laughs> Scenes do move quicker than smells. This is the problem. <laughs> I also think there's another problem. Is that Look, it says here that you get things like they're equipped with a tickler, right? So behind every seat, there's a little brush. And when maybe, maybe there's a scene in the movie where something, I don't know, maybe it's a horror film, maybe it's not, maybe it's something else, but there's, there's a, a little brush comes out and tickles the back of your legs at certain points and stuff during the film, or blows down the back of your neck. There's little things like that and stuff. It's carte blanche for perverts. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah. This is open season for your cinema pervert, isn't it, this? Isn't it? Yeah. You've got, you you've got some, some, little old, some little person sat behind you. Every now and again, you feel somebody touching the back of your neck and stuff going, is that the film or is that... And you look around and he's like, sorry, mate, it's the 4D experience. <laughs> Let's have your quiz, Lloyd. Right. This is a very specific quiz about... Animals in the Tower of London. Okay. Yes. Buzz. Um. No, no, no. Are there questions? No. Thank God for that. King Henry the Third. Yeah. Which animal did he famously keep in the Tower of London? Polar bear. Correct. Really? <laughs> yep. That was a. I'm going to level with you. <laughs> that was a guess. He did. He kept a polar bear. <laughs> no way. <laughs> he did, and he uh, and it was um. It had like an ankle tag on it. Um. Obviously, <laughs> <laughs> obviously, what? So if he went off, at, if he went outside, it was beep beep no, beep beep. No, not like he was like a young offender or anything. Like a, <laughs> he was tethered by the ankle, yeah. So he could um, swim in the Thames and fish, but but couldn't what, escape. How far? How long was the rope? It was a it was a a, a, a fair old length. <laughs> so he was tethered with a rope that he could just. Or run. maybe he could swim in the moat. I can't remember. I mean, yeah, it's he right. can't have swum in the Thames, can he? <laughs> Anyway, you've got that question right. How did he get back in over the wall and stuff? I think they just pulled on the rope, didn't they? <laughs> what, they pulled on, they winched him, and they winched him back in, did they? And he came out of the Thames, <laughs> flat on his on his face, being dragged along, on, <laughs> being dragged along, winched along the ground. Well, no, they were cruel in those days. I imagine they threatened hey, with a stick or hey, something. Uh, how about that for a guess, though? <laughs> that was a good guess. That was a total guess. I, I was going to give you multiple choice. I'll keep score, one point. What was the yeah. other choices? A rhino. Rubbish. And uh, 20 zebras. Ridiculous. <laughs> right. There was once a room in the Tower of L London visitors could go to, which contained an animal just basically loose. Do you want a multiple uh, choice? A loose animal. To and interact with. A loose animal to... Let me have a guess first. Yeah. A loose animal to interact with. Yeah. When was this? 
don't know, a long time ago. A long time... Mammoth? No, <laughs> not that long. Dodo? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, Brontosaurus? No. <laughs> How long ago are we talking? I reckon within the last 600 years. Oh, it's a... Uh, it's, um... It's, uh, if it's in the last 600 years, a loose, interactive animal, it will be a, a monkey. Correct. No. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> this is he unbelievable. Used to be able to go into the room and interact with the monkeys until one of the monkeys attacked a small boy. And, but I'm, just, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I should react to that, but I'm still so astounded by getting two out of two without even needing the multiple choice. Lloyd, this is... I say unprecedented quiz. This skill. is unprecedented. Imagine seeing this on TV now. Twitter will be going crazy. People will be switching on the. Have you seen on TV? There's a bro guessing them without even getting the multiple choice. He's on. He's amazing. He's. What channel is it? Oh, the, the TVs will be lighting up all over the world. Question. Pity it doesn't work the same with radio. <laughs> <laughs> question number three. Oh my God! I'm sorry. Let me have a guess anyway. Before the question okay, comes, I'm right. on that. I'm that hot. All right. Tiger. Oh, close up. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, you won't. You, you need the question, really. Okay. So it used to be able. There used to be a lion that used to be able to interact with. <gasps> How close was I with Tiger? What a pretty guess. close. And a woman once uh, met the uh, lion and um, yeah, met an odd word. <laughs> <laughs> a visitor once uh, sort of interacted. Uh, interacted with a lion. Yeah. And um, she repeatedly stroked the lion's paw. Right. What happened next? I give you the multiple choice on this one if Hang you want. Hang on a minute now. Let me have a guess without the multiple choice. Is it? How long ago was this? <laughs> Again, I'm, I'm not too hot on the date. I'd yeah. say probably 16th century, 15th century. 15th, 16th century. There's a place in the Tower of London where they had a lion. And you yeah. could interact with a lion. And go one, and see the lion, yeah. You could go and see the lion. You could interact. You could meet him. Meet the lion, it said. Yeah. Today, one day only, meet, meet our lion. And then a woman one day interacted with him, stroked his paw. Yeah. What, just on one day? Or she went back every day and stroked it? Well, the, these are the options. After stroking the paw... Right, hang on a minute now. She stroked the paw... She stroked the paw. She stroked the paw. The woman stroked the lion's paw. Hang on, the only thing that's coming to mind is Daniel the lion's den. He, he took out a, a... A thorn. He took out a thorn from the lion, and the lion after that felt indebted, felt a debt of gratitude, and looked after him when he went in then in the... The uh, uh, Roman experiment. In the Roman thingy, yeah, the Roman experiment, and the lion remembered him and said, hey, you're the fella that took my thing out, I'm yep. going to leave you alone. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to say, the woman stroked his paw. Years later... Yes. The woman was thrown to the lions... Yeah. ...in some strange carnival-type thing, maybe yep. in Kent, possibly. <laughs> <laughs> they are savages. Uh, and uh, and the lion recognised her as the woman who stroked my paw and he left her alone in a very, very similar way to Daniel of the Lion's Den, which posits the theory is probably made up and they just uh, really copied the story. Was, am I right? Uh, no, it uh, bit her arm off. <laughs> <laughs> oh! This is, where, this is where you fall apart on the oh quiz. Oh my word, is that the answer? <laughs> yeah, Every, bit so her arm she, off. she repeatedly stroked his paw and he bit her arm off, yeah. is the answer. I'm sorry to any kids listening. It was a long time ago though. Yeah. <laughs> right, there, a baboon used to live in the Tower of London. Is this part of the quiz, is it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is Lloyd's uh, Animals in the Tower of London quiz. Okay. What was he famous for doing? This baboon. What, apart from living in the Tower of London? <laughs> does, he need, does he need more, does he? You're going to have to do more You're than gonna that. You're going to have to raise your game now that lion <laughs> bit that woman's arm off. <laughs> have you been in room three? Have you seen what Leo's done? <laughs> you need to raise your game, Barry, or you're going to be out. Your... <laughs> Barry. <laughs> Barry the baboon. <laughs> okay, so it's not enough that he just li he moved from Borneo. Or wherever he lived. Yeah. Barry the Borneo baboon. Yeah. He moved to the Tower of London. That wasn't Well, you enough. say he moved as if it was, he was, you know, it was a, a choice. No, well, wasn't it? No. <laughs> <laughs> He's captured or he was given as a gift oh, to okay. one of the kings. Well, that's not enough, is it? He was famous for... No, I mean, it is enough. Being the king's was, birthday present. There was enough, uh, there was another element <laughs> so to the baboon. He's turned up at the Tower of London. He's leapt out of the king's birthday cake. <laughs> and that is not enough to make him famous. <laughs> well, I don't know. He was... Uh, you could have the options if you want. He played centre forward for Tring. <laughs> no. <laughs> a 
<laughs> what then? These are the options. Okay, hang on, let me have a guess first. I'm quite you did. You said he was a football player okay. for a Hertfordshire team. <laughs> a Hertfordshire based second 11. Right. Right. W- w- was well, he famous for smoking a pipe? Hang on a minute. Hang on. Let me was he famous story. for painting pictures? Or was he famous for being employed as a handyman? <laughs> <laughs> Let me think about this. Was he famous for smoking a pipe? He's a baboon, you say? He was a baboon, yeah. Are they the ones with the big pink bottoms? They are indeed, yeah. One and two sort of go together in my mind. I've got him... <laughs> You've got, got him I've painting got him pictures him. while smoking a pipe. While well, thoughtfully <laughs> sucking on a pipe. I sort of... Yeah, I have. You go in for... So you're, you're... Oh, he can't have been a handy man in the Tower of London, a baboon, surely not. I think he... I'm going to go one. Smoked a pipe. Correct. Oh! <laughs> Three out of four. If you enjoyed that, why not listen to the whole show? Rod Gilbert live on Saturday mornings, BBC Radio Wales, 11 till 1.